Look at these three people. All of them seem perfectly normal. But one of them is actually a cyborg controlled by AI. Can you figure out which person it is? It's that girl on the left. Have you noticed letters in her eyes? That's outright weird. Now, these girls are pregnant and about to give birth. But not everything is as it seems. Can you figure out what's weird here? The girl on the left isn't actually pregnant. She's got a pillow under her hospital gown, which makes her belly look bumpy. As for the woman on the right, she is pregnant. But look at that x-ray hanging over her bed. It's not a human baby. Look at these creatures attentively. They sure seem to be terrifying. But only one of them is actually a real sandworm. Your task is to understand which one it is. The sandworm on the left has a zipper. It must be some kind of a huge carnival costume. The creature in the middle has several wheels attached to its bottom part. It must be some carnival construction too. Only the monster on the right is a real sandworm. A crazy scientist took 10 people into his lab to check their intelligence. He gave everyone two pills and a glass of water. He told them, one pill is a placebo and the other is poison. Whichever you take, I'll take. But somehow, everyone ended up unconscious after the trial except for the scientist. How did he do it? Both pills were placebo. The poison was in the water. Shane and Mia went to Japan for their honeymoon. Only Shane came back, and Mia's family called the best detective in town. What should be the detective's first move? Inspect Shane's suitcase. Inspect Shane's house. Call the travel agency Shane and Mia used. Call the agency to see how many return tickets Shane had booked. He's a suspect, and he shouldn't know the police are investigating him to avoid losing the evidence. Someone knocked on Amy's hotel room door. When she opened it, she saw a mysterious man. He apologized and said he'd mistaken Amy's room for his. When he left, Amy called the police. Why? Nobody knocks on the door of their own room. This is a technique used by people who want to break into someone's home. A worker was found unconscious near the entrance of an abandoned building. He has no memory of what happened, but seems to have fallen from the building. Detective Marx is assigned to this case, and he must figure out whether the worker fell or was pushed. He goes to the first floor, opens the window, and throws out a small rock. He does the same on the second floor and all the way to the top. When the detective comes back down, he's sure the worker was pushed. How does he know? He had to open windows on all floors to throw out rocks. This was an abandoned building, and someone closed the window right after pushing the worker. James ordered a coffee from his local bakery, put in some sugar, but then noticed a fly in his cup. He told the staff member, and they took back the coffee and brought him a new one. But when he got a sip, he got angry. Why? His new coffee was already sweetened. The staff member only removed the fly. Tom was walking in a snowy park at 10 p.m. when he got attacked from behind. He didn't see who knocked him out, and he immediately went to the police. The detectives questioned four suspects. Adam said he was at a suit fitting for his dinner later. Daniel said he was hosting a party at his place. Susan said she was working out before going to work. And Luke said he went to the park to get some cool photos of flying birds. One of them is lying. Who?
It's Luke. It's next to impossible to see birds at night in winter. Right before the final soccer match, the team's goalkeeper went missing. The police arrived and they had three suspects from the rival team. Mike said he was signing autographs for his friends. Jake said he had broken his ankle and he was getting a massage. John was training at the gym before the match. The police immediately knew who did it. It was Jake. You don't get a massage when you break your ankle. A doctor walked into an unconscious patient's ward. There, he saw a nurse buttoning up her shirt. As soon as she noticed him, she exclaimed, It's not what you think! The nurse isn't lying, but why was her shirt unbuttoned in the first place? She got locked out of the changing room and knew that the patient was unconscious. So she went to his ward to change into her uniform. Yeah, I believe her. A group of six friends decided to check out an abandoned house in their neighborhood. When they arrived, Mark, one of the group, warned his friends not to go in. But all of them ignored him and walked in anyway. Mark stayed outside, but his friends never came out. Mm -hmm. What did he see that stopped him from going into the house? There were footprints going in, but none coming out. Detective Stevenson is taken by some of his mean supervisors who want to test his intelligence. They put him in a room with two doors. One leads to freedom, while the other opens onto a bottomless pit. There are two guards, either responsible for one door. One of them always tells the truth, while the other always lies. Stevenson doesn't know who's the honest one, and he can only ask one question to one of them. What should the question be to save his life? If I ask the security guard next to you which door leads to freedom, what will he say? The honest guard will say that the liar will point to the dangerous door. The liar will point to that one too. No matter who Stevenson asks, he should pick the door neither of them will point at. Melissa is walking down a dark alley when she notices a dark figure following her. She walks into a restaurant and sits at a table. The mysterious figure does the same. Then she yawns and immediately knows she's got a stalker. How? When she looked up, the mysterious figure was also yawning. It means they had been watching her. The director of a large company was found unconscious in his office. The police showed up, saw the messy office, and realized that a fight had gone down. They went to his secretary and asked to see the list of visitors that day. Immediately, they knew who did it. How? The last visitor was the culprit. During the fight, the wall clock also stopped because it got hit. It showed the exact time the last appointment took place. Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now they have two options. Take a high-speed train for 100 bucks to go to the right airport, or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option. Look at the clock on the wall. It's 9.55 a.m. The boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take the high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see?
This woman over there is a zombie. Wow, how did she get through security? When it was finally time to board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate, but it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. The glamorous lady began to chat with Kim and Ashley. She told them she had recently visited an exotic island with her friends. Then she showed the girl some pictures. When the lady went to the bathroom, Ashley whispered to Kim, This woman is a liar. She photoshopped this picture. How did Ashley know that? It's all about the shadows. They all look natural, except for this one. The glamorous lady took a sip of her juice and started coughing. Suddenly, she fainted and fell into the billionaire's arms. He was ready to shout for help, but Kim stopped him, saying the woman was faking it. How did she know that? Look at the content of her bag. It's full of the billionaire's pictures and magazine articles. She also has a tattoo with his portrait on her leg. This woman is obsessed with him. It was lunchtime, and the billionaire offered Kim to play a game. There were three boxes. One of them contained a meal. There was a statement on each box, but only one of them was true. Can you help Kim figure out which box has food inside? If the food is in the first box, there are two true statements. And if the food is in the third box, there are also two true statements. But we need just one true statement. That's why the food can only be in the second box. Kim opened the box. She saw a delicious meal and a bank card. The billionaire said, congratulations, you've won $5 million. Enjoy your trip. Kim and Ashley landed in Rome and went to get their luggage. It turned out that Ashley had had the same suitcase as two other passengers, and they had a little quarrel. Can you help distribute the three suitcases among these people? The first suitcase belongs to this woman. It's covered in her dog's hair. The second suitcase has some traces of a star sticker. You've probably noticed it before on Ashley's bag. And the third suitcase belongs to this man. Since Kim and Ashley were now very rich, they decided to find a real estate agent who could help them rent a luxurious villa. They wanted to spend their vacation there. The agent showed them three houses. Can you help the girls choose the best one? There are cockroaches in the first house. Mm, They won't make very pleasant neighbors. The second house is too old. There's a crack in the wall, which doesn't look safe. And the third house looks pretty good. As for the pool, it can be easily cleaned. Yes! Kim and Ashley left the villa and went sightseeing. When they returned, they found out that someone had stolen their passports from the safe. The girls called the police, and they interrogated three suspects. The chef was too busy making dinner for Kim and Ashley. The cleaner was dealing with the pool all day, and the gardener said he had been outside planting flowers. He didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The gardener. If he planted the flowers, where are they? The police returned Kim and Ashley their passports and arrested the gardener. The next day, the girls went shopping. Sellers wanted to take advantage of rich and naive tourists and offer them overpriced souvenirs. Only one of these three items is a good deal. Can you guess which one? Take a look at this Venetian mask. It says made in China, which means that this mask can't be real. This magnet is of very low quality. The word Italy is spelled with an error. It simply can't cost $100. 
This blue cheese doesn't look fresh, but it's normal for this kind of product. This delicacy is the only thing that Kim and Ashley can buy here for a fair price. The ladies went to the local museum and got lost in its corridors. They found a strange basement with three doors. There was a time portal to the Middle Ages behind the first door. Behind the second door, there was an evil mummy. It cursed anyone who bothered it. Finally, the third door was protected with a laser alarm system. It cut through anything that touched the laser beams. Which door should the girls choose? The second one. The mummy is sleeping peacefully inside its sarcophagus. If Kim and Ashley are quiet and don't come close, they can just walk by it. When the girls got outside, they saw a crowd of reporters around the museum. Someone has stolen the most expensive painting. The police questioned three suspects. Giovanni, the cleaner, said he had been washing the bathroom when the theft happened. Hmm. Luca, the museum guide, saw a suspicious woman with a large folder not far from the crime scene. And Bianca, the suspicious woman, was just drawing sketches as part of her art school homework. Who's lying? Luca. He has a rolled canvas under his shirt. Kim and Ashley came to a restaurant to enjoy the local cuisine. But they noticed a vampire among the visitors. So the girls decided to leave. Which visitor is the vampire? This elderly lady is wearing sunglasses in the evening. Also, she doesn't have a shadow. A super wealthy businessman, Mr. Carl Jenkins, has been taken and left locked up all alone in a dark room. His phone's almost run out of charge, so he can only write one message. He knows that someone might spy on his phone, so he decided to write a message with a code to a high school friend, John Smith, who runs a detective agency. He remembered that in high school, they would cipher messages to each other, so he used the same technique. The message was this. Can you guess what it means? Back in high school, they would shift one letter to the right each time they needed to write a secret code. To decipher it, you need to go one letter to the left. Their alphabet looks like this. The message is, it was Eric. Having read the message, John knew immediately who his friend was talking about. Eric is the financial director of Carl's company. He had seen him once at a party a couple of years ago, so he knew what he looked like. John decided to investigate this case himself and help his friend out. He was sure there was something secret in Carl's mansion. Somehow, he thought he knew that Eric would have the key to the mansion. The receptionist, Kelly, said he would always have lunch with different business partners at 2 p.m. sharp in his favorite cafe. When the detective drove up to the cafe, he saw Eric, the man with a beard, discussing business with someone. Either of them had a briefcase next to them, and the briefcases looked similar to each other. John was waiting for Eric and the second guy to leave the cafe. They went to the car, got in, and left both briefcases on the back seat. The detective followed them. They left the car in a parking lot, and luckily, they were careless enough to leave the car open. Which briefcase should the detective grab? The one that looks brand new. While they were walking to the car, the detective spotted a few scratches on the second man's briefcase. Both briefcases were locked with a cipher. Not to make the whole thing suspicious, the detective decided not to take it and cracked the code right in the car. Can you help him open the briefcase? The code is 000. The briefcase is brand new, and Eric probably didn't have time to set a code on it yet. Plus, Eric's the one who leaves the car open and unattended in a parking lot. So, no wonder he uses a default code for his briefcase. Now that the detective has the key, he heads to the mansion. The front door isn't a problem with the key in hand. 
The study is upstairs. He's been there before, so he remembers the stairs leading up have a secret. If you step on the wrong stair, you'll instantly fall to the basement and won't be able to escape from it yourself. What step should John mind? It's the one with the slit in the middle. When you step on it, it opens, and you get into a dark room with bats and spiders. Yikes! Alright, John is finally at the study door, and Carl would always use buttons to open it. You've got only one try. There are three buttons, yellow, green, and blue. Which one should the detective choose if he knows that Carl is a big fan of painting? A combination of blue and yellow gives green, so the door opens. Green light for our detective. He finally reaches the safe with top-secret documents that could help him find out the truth. Obviously, just like any other safe, it's locked with a code. It also has a warning. You can enter the code only once. If you hit the wrong code, the safe locks up forever. He's looking around for a hint, and voila, John is right. On the desk, he sees a note. It says, secret code, and has a combination of three digits. Three, something, and one. The digit in the middle can't be seen since there's an ink stain right on it. Can you crack the code with one attempt only? The code is 371. The detective thought the code was used frequently, so the button must have been a bit worn out. He was right. Since he knew the beginning and the end, he only needed to find one more worn button. Alright, now he's got the top-secret documents he needed for his investigation. He looks through all the papers and finally finds something that looks like the document he actually needed. To take it as a hard proof, he needs to find one which is not fake. There are four copies, they look almost the same, but only one is real. Can you guess which one? It's the one in the upper left corner. It has a stamp, a signature, and it says agreement. The one next to it looks the same, but it has a spelling mistake. It says agreement. Other copies lack either a stamp or a signature. So the detective takes a closer look at this agreement and sees something about a painting bought in an auction. He suddenly understands that his friend Carl was taken so that someone could sneak into his mansion and grab that super expensive painting. He's looking at the wall with all the paintings Carl collected and realizes that no painting is missing. There are as many nails in the wall as there are paintings. Still. There's something strange about one of them. Can you spot what's wrong here? Even though all the paintings are present, there's one that lacks a frame. According to the agreement, the painting has been recently bought, and an art dealer helped Carl pick it. The expert was an honest man, and he helped Carl make sure all the other paintings in his collection were real. This time, the painting turned out to be nothing but a copy. Why did the expert suggest that Carl buy it? Although the painting cost nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. The one who grabbed it definitely knew that. Everyone in town thought Jack was silly, because every time someone offered him a choice between a 50-cent coin or a $1 bill, he would always choose the 50-cent coin. People all over town would give him the same offer to see if he would ever learn. He never grabbed the bill one time. The people in the town didn't realize that Jack was actually a genius. What was so smart about what Jack was doing? 
Jack was actually really smart because he got everyone in the town to shower him with free money. As long as he continued to choose the less valuable option, people would come and try this trick on him over and over again. See that car? Jack's been refusing $1 bills for over 10 years now, and he saved up enough money to get a car. Three men were trying to decide who was the smartest among them. A random passerby offered to help. He said he would give them a riddle, and whoever managed to crack it could call themselves the smartest. He said, You see these five caps in my hands? Three of them are black, and two are white. Close your eyes. The three men closed their eyes. He put a black cap on each of them and hid the two white caps in the bag. Now you can open your eyes. Whoever guesses the color of the cap he is wearing is the smartest. The men spent ages looking at each other, trying to crack the riddle. Suddenly, one of them worked it out and shouted, I'm wearing a black cap. Now how did he guess? Ah well, he didn't actually guess. He tried to think logically, but there was no logical answer. So he looked at his reflection in a nearby puddle. You find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, you realize that one of the pictures doesn't belong. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out? You have 7 seconds to guess. It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names, but the llama only has one double. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full, but your friend argues that it's less than half full. How do you figure out who's right without using any tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so the water just about touches its rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the base is still covered with water, it's more than half full. You find yourself in the middle of a forest with three paths in front of you. One is covered with scalding lava. Another is littered with sharp nails and broken glass. And the third path is so cold that it feels like you're in Antarctica. Which path should you choose? Pick the third path, it's bound to warm up so. It's so close to the lava that the ice will melt in a few seconds. John was at home sitting in his chair with a book. All of a sudden, his wife's super expensive statue fell and broke in their bedroom. He ran into the room in time to see a stranger jump out the window and run away. John tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold, so he couldn't identify the intruder. When the police arrived, They listened to his story and immediately knew he was lying. Why were they so sure? Anyone who wears glasses knows that they don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. The man made the story up because he didn't want to admit that he'd broken the statue himself. One day, a man got caught in the pouring rain. Unfortunately, he had nothing to keep himself dry, not even a hat or an umbrella. Somehow, not a single hair on his head got wet. Why is this? Well, the man was bald. You have three matches. Can you make a six out of them without breaking them into pieces? Who said the number has to be a standard 6? The matches made a perfect Roman numeral 3 right from the get-go. So all you have to do is push the bottoms of the first two matches together into a V, and you've got a Roman numeral 6. Let's imagine you don't know what an elephant looks like. One day, you're going on a safari to watch animals with your friends. One of them points at a rhino and tells you it's an elephant. The other shows you a hippo and claim that it's an elephant. Who would you believe and why? You didn't know what an elephant looked like, but that doesn't mean you didn't know what a hippo or a rhino looked like either. 
you wouldn't believe either of your friends. It's your first day in the new office. Some colleagues don't seem very friendly, and you can't understand why. They also act strangely, never have coffee breaks, and work at least 12 hours a day. A secretary at the reception desk tells you that their company hires robots because they work so hard and aren't addicted to coffee. She tells you to try to stay away from them and avoid making conversation because they aren't programmed to talk to people. It's quite easy to tell who's a robot. Can you guess which one's the robot out of Anna, Mike, and Lucy? It's Mike! He's the only one of the three with a switch on his right. Two teen sisters, Maya and Ariana, were supposed to study in the library, but one of them went to a party instead. When they came back home, their parents could immediately tell who hadn't been to the library. Can you? It was Maya. Look, there's glitter in her hair. Mr. Harris is a landlord. In his building, it's prohibited to have any pets, but he keeps hearing some barking on the third floor. There are three apartments there, so he decides to pay a visit to everyone who lives on that floor. Mr. Walker, Ms. Clark, and Mr. Allen. Can you tell who keeps a dog? It's Mr. Allen. Take a look at the shoe rack. Some of his shoes are chewed. Four friends were going to another city by car, but at some point, something distracted the driver and they got in a car crash. A police officer arrived and started the investigation. He asked who had been driving, but no one took the blame. Then, the officer inspected the car. Can you tell who the driver was? The driver was the red-haired girl. There's a sweater on the driver's seat. She's the only one not wearing a jacket or sweater, so it must be hers. Mrs. Miller was waiting for a delivery, but she never got it. And since the woman had to go to work, she asked her husband to drive to the post office and ask about her package. When Mrs. Miller came back home, Mr. Miller said he'd just returned from the post office, but they said the package hadn't arrived yet. Mrs. Miller didn't believe him and claimed he hadn't driven anywhere. How did she understand it? Take a look at the car. It's all covered in snow. To go to the post office, Mr. Miller would have to clean it first. In a parallel universe, you're only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Rellum came back home after a long and entertaining day at the club. Her three daughters were supposed to have a lot of fun on their own. She asked them what they had been doing. Hannah said she'd been watching TV all day long. Ellie answered she'd spent the day at a water park. Ava told her mom she and her friends had a candy-eating contest. Still, Mrs. Rellum could tell one of her daughters was lying. That daughter spent all day studying. Who was it? It was Hannah. Take a closer look at her hands. There are some ink stains. If she had actually watched TV, she wouldn't have needed a pen. In June, students of the Faculty of Economics had their econometrics exam. It was the hardest one in that semester, and everyone was worried. On the day of the exam, the students entered the classroom. Everyone was assigned to a specific seat. A professor was sure one of the students was going to cheat, so he made that person sit right in front of him. Which student was it, and how did the professor know? It's the guy with dark hair. It's June, and all the students are lightly dressed. Still, this student is wearing a sweater with long sleeves. He must be up to something. Now take a look at these three students, Savannah, Melody, and Scarlett. One of them managed to cheat at the exam, and no one noticed it. Can you tell who it was and how she managed to use her notes? It was Scarlett. She's wearing long boots. 
That's where she kept her notes. Michelle was having a house party. She noticed that her brother had disappeared and went upstairs to find him. When she neared his room, she heard laughter. Her brother was in there with some girl. But Michelle couldn't figure out who it was. She got very curious. So after they left, she sneaked into his room to look for some hints. She suspected three girls, Lily, Sydney, and Nicole. Michelle immediately guessed who her brother was dating. Who was it? Her brother is dating Nicole. There's an earring on the couch. And Nicole is wearing only one earring, which looks exactly the same. She must have lost it. Can you tell which student in the classroom isn't a real person? The guy in the middle doesn't cast a shadow. There's definitely something fishy about him. Michael had a crush on Ellie, the girl he studied with. One day, he decided to write her a note, asking her out. Unfortunately, he didn't remember which desk was Ellie's. Can you tell which one Michael needs? Take a look at Ellie's photo. She's waving her left hand, which means she's likely left-handed. There's only one desk where the pen is to the left of the copybook. It must be Ellie's desk. A grocery store manager found out that someone had been stealing bananas from the store all the time. The man conducted his own investigation and got three suspects. But he couldn't accuse the customers until he was 100% sure. Take a look at these people and say who the banana thief is. Look at the guy wearing a top hat. It's a perfect place for hiding and stealing stuff. He must be the thief. Brandon and Genevieve are on their working trip to London. They decided to meet in a cafe in the evening. Now, they're both driving there. Can you tell which of them isn't smart? Brandon. In England, people drive on the left side of the road and he's driving on the right. Early in the morning, a big sum of money went missing from the accountant's safe in the office. Only three people were at work at that time. Haley, the accountant, said she'd left for a couple of minutes to go to the bathroom. Eric, the software manager, claimed he'd had his lunch break and hadn't seen anything. Joseph, the cleaning man, said he'd been cleaning the second floor at the time. Can you figure out who's lying? It's Eric. He couldn't have a lunch break. It was still early in the morning. Allison met a stranger yesterday, and she immediately knew who he was. She hadn't seen this person before, and no one had ever described him to her. He wasn't a celebrity, and he wasn't doing anything unusual. So how come she knew who he was? The man was the twin brother of one of Allison's friends. Bill is a shoe shiner. He offers his services to passers-by for free. Still, people who accept it end up paying him of their own will. How so? Bill shines only one shoe for free. People don't want to look bizarre with just one clean shoe and have to pay for the shining of the other one. The king told his three daughters to place three identical kettles with the same amount of water on the fire. The king promised that the husband of the daughter whose kettle would boil first would become his heir. His youngest daughter's kettle boiled first. How come? While the other daughters kept lifting their kettle's lids to check if the water was already boiling, the youngest one kept it closed. Up for some math? Nah, just kidding. You'll only need your logic. Find a way to get 200 out of 188 by just using one line.
use the line to cut 188 horizontally. This way, you'll get two 100s. One person was 25 years old in 2000 and 20 years old in 2005. How is this possible? This person lived before Common Era. One man went to his friend's party and told his wife he'd be back before sunrise. He shaved and left home. He returned as promised before sunrise, but he was sporting a long, thick beard. How come? The man and his wife lived in a place with polar nights that can last for several months. A man was driving his car all the way from New York to Boston. Only at the end of the trip did he discover that one of his car's tires had been punctured from the very beginning. Still, he managed to reach his destination successfully, and his journey wasn't affected by this problem at all. How is it possible? The punctured tire was the spare one. The financial director of a big company finally persuaded new partners to sign a super important agreement. He then put this document into a folder and left it on the table in his office. When he arrived at work the next morning, the folder was gone. John gathered all the employees who were in the office at the time and questioned them. The cleaning lady said that she had been busy washing the floor and hadn't paid attention to anything around. The designer explained that he hadn't left his working place even once. What's more, being an artist, he didn't have any interest in agreement documents. The accountant admitted that he had entered John's office to have some documents signed. But once he noticed there was no one inside, he immediately left. Who took the folder with the agreement? It was the designer. John never mentioned which folder was gone. How would he know that the missing folder had an agreement inside? Eric wears either only black or only white socks. One morning, he was in a hurry, getting ready for an important meeting with new partners. Suddenly, the power goes out. The guy has 10 white and 10 black socks in his drawer, but all of them are mixed. He doesn't want to look silly at work wearing different socks. If it's completely dark in the room and Eric can't see anything, how many socks should he pull out of the drawer to get himself two matching ones? Three socks are more than enough. In a set of three socks, he's bound to have two of the same color. A hungry vampire is following you in a lonely street one dark night. Suddenly, you see a house with its door wide open and decide to hide there. The vampire can't enter your shelter since you lock the door in the nick of time, but it's waiting for you outside. However, you still have some hope. There are three doors leading out of the house. When you open the first door, there's molten lava. No thanks. The second door leads to the room with tarantulas as large as your head. Yikes! As for the third door, you can definitely hear a huge dog barking inside that room, and you're kind of afraid of it. What should you do? Ah, just wait till morning. Vampires can't stand daylight, and your pursuer will have to leave you alone. You're trapped in a room that's slowly getting filled with water coming from a faucet on the wall. There are no windows in the room, and the door is sealed shut. You have a mop and a big bucket. So how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Come on, just turn the faucet off. Now it's better. Jane told her boss someone had taken the document she prepared for the meeting. She added that she had noticed someone come in wearing a smart suit, gloves, and a black mask, safety first. This person also had three rings on their fingers. The boss didn't believe her. Why? She said the person was wearing gloves. Then how did she see three rings on their fingers? Jane must have simply forgotten to print those documents out. Okay, get ready! 
Today I'll show you different riddles, and you'll have to decide which girl is behaving least wisely, which is a nicer way of saying she's a dunderhead. You'll have 7 seconds to decide. The riddles may award 1 point, 2 points, or 3 points. So grab a piece of paper and give yourself the points each time you get it right. We'll start with the easiest questions that earn 1 point each. Autumn and Hope are going for a walk with their friends. It's 60 degrees outside. Who is dressed in the worst way? Hope. Autumn can take some of her clothes off, but Hope doesn't have anything to wear in case she feels cold. Ava and Olivia are camping in a forest. Suddenly, they encounter a bear on their trail. Ava stands still, and Olivia starts to run away. Who is in danger? Olivia! The bear might see her as prey and follow. And he's definitely faster. So it's better to keep your cool and slowly move backwards, keeping the eye contact. Haley and Savannah are making sandwiches for lunch. Who did something terribly wrong? Haley. She put rat poison in the sandwich instead of jelly. Delaney is on the road trip and stopped to make a couple of pictures. Lenore is riding a bike to a nearby city. Who isn't being smart? Delaney. She parked her car right under the sign that says parking isn't allowed. Jane and Charlotte are learning how to swim. Jane went to the lake with her little siblings, and Charlotte went to the ocean with her friends. They both jumped in the water alone. Who is in greater danger? Jane. In case she struggles, her little siblings won't be able to pull her out. McKenna and Desiree are late for school, so they're taking a shortcut. McKenna takes the way through the woods, and Desiree decides to go across a frozen lake. Who's in danger? Desiree. There are cracks on the lake surface. Ruby and Mary were enjoying their time outside when a storm started. Ruby hid in her car in the open space, and Mary kept swimming in the ocean. Who is not safe? Mary should get out immediately. It's dangerous to touch water during a thunderstorm. It's okay to hide in a hardtop vehicle as Ruby did. Okay, easy questions are over. Next questions will give you 2 points each. Paige and Riley are going on a date but they tell their parents they're practicing instead. Paige plays tennis, and Riley plays soccer. Who's the worst conspirator? Riley. She's dressed inappropriately for a soccer game. Unlike Paige, she doesn't have any change of clothes or equipment with her. Quinn and Sandra are working in a garden. Quinn was told to water the flowers, and Sandra should mow the lawn. Who's doing something wrong? Quinn. She was told to water the flowers, but she's watering the trees. Everly and Jasmine drove to a mall. Everly left her belongings in the car, and Jasmine locked her dog there while she's shopping. Who's being more stupid? Jasmine. You shouldn't leave animals or people in a closed car, especially in the hot sun. It's the wrong way to get a hot dog. Mia and Stella wanted to get a tattoo and skip their classes to get home right after school. When they get home, they immediately run into their parents. Who's going to get in trouble? Stella. 
Stella. Her tattoo is right on her wrist, and there's no way her parents won't notice it immediately. Hannah's best friend is teaching her ice skating, and Lily is learning to ride a bike with her older brother. After several minutes, they feel like they've got it and ride away from their supervisors very fast. Who's least careful? Lily. Hannah has the railing by her side that she can grab in case she falls. Lily will crash to the ground. Kylie and Abby are bloggers getting ready for a party. Who is missing something? Kylie. She's charging her cell phone, but the cord is unplugged. Melanie and Delilah are walking home from work late in the night. Which of the two isn't being careful? Melanie. Although she's walking in a less creepy place, there are no people around. If something happens, no one will be around to help her. Sophia and Brooke went camping in the forest. Suddenly, they notice a moose moving towards them. Who is in greater danger? Sophia, who is wearing heels and will run slower. Brooke can drop her huge backpack and use it as an obstacle. Kira and Ava want to go to a party, but their parents banned them from leaving the house. Kira decided to sneak out using the attic window, while Ava used the back door. Who won't make it to the party tonight? Ava. Kira is quite risky, but Ava's dad is reading a newspaper in the backyard. Maya and Chloe went for a walk. Maya went to a forest and stopped to take selfies with a friendly squirrel she met. Chloe went hiking and decided to take a selfie on the cliff. Who is in danger? Maya. The branch above her is about to fall. Maeve and Sarah are cheating on their math test. Who is more likely to be caught? Sarah. Although she's sitting in the back, the teacher's looking right at her. Bella and Ashley came home from a party, which they told their parents would be a study date. Who's going to be grounded till the end of the month? Bella. She'll have a hard time coming up with a logical explanation for the confetti in her hair. Elizabeth and Kate are late for work, so they're driving above the speed limit. Which of them is in greater danger? Kate. She has many objects lying scattered in her car. In case of an accident, they may hit her. 